All right, so let's go into chapter 9.1 and talk about something called correlation. Okay, so what are we going to do here, guys? We're going to introduce the linear correlation, uh, independent and dependent variables, and talk a little bit about types of correlation. We're going to find something called the correlation coefficient, and then we're going to distinguish between correlation and causation, and this is probably one of the biggest uh, issues in statistics is that so often people mistake statistics as giving us causation. Okay, so what is correlation? It's simply a relationship between two variables. The data can be represented by ordered pairs, so we have an, an X or independent variable. Oftentimes you'll hear this referred to as an explanatory variable, okay? It's doing the explaining. And Y is going to be referred to as our dependent variable or the response variable. It's what gets predicted. Okay, we're going to use a scatter plot. All right, it can be used to determine whether a linear, uh, meaning a straight line correlation, exists between two variables. All right, so here's just a very simple example. We have uh, some X or uh, independent variables here of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have some response variables correlating to those um, x variables. All right, I'm just going to plot them on the graph. And looking at these blue lines, we can see, or these blue dots rather, we can see we have a rough linear relationship here. Okay, there are several types of correlation that can exist. All right, one is a negative linear correlation, as we see here in the scatter plot, meaning that as x increases, so as x gets bigger, y tends to decrease. All right, so as x gets bigger, y is decreasing. Okay, so we have a, a negative linear relationship. Okay, what would be an example of a negative linear relationship? Um, well, uh, Let's see here. Uh, a funny example would be if X is counting the number of drinks you have, and Y could be how well you're doing on a golf course. All right, typically the more you drink, the worse you do. Okay, what about a positive linear correlation? All right, so this is um, as X increases, Y tends to increase. So here as X gets bigger, Y too gets bigger. All right, and so we have this positive linear relationship. All right, so what would be an example of a positive linear relationship? Uh, the longer you study, the better you do on the test. Okay, so the longer you study, the higher your test score. Okay. And then here we can see there's something like no correlation. No correlation exists whatsoever. So in this situation, our scatter plot looks like we've just randomly put dots on our graph. All right, There's no way we can see any kind of linear pattern of the dots. And then we can have something called a nonlinear correlation. Note, this is different than no correlation. In this last scatter plot here, we clearly see a pattern, right? It's a parabola, okay? That just means, but parabola is not a line, and so that just means it's a non-linear correlation. All right, let's go through an example of constructing a scatter plot. An economist wants to determine whether there is a linear relationship between a country's gross domestic product and carbon dioxide emissions. The data are shown in the table, display the data in a scatter plot, and determine whether there appears to be a positive or negative linear correlation or no correlation. All right, so what are we going to do? Okay, well, all right, what we can do here, uh, we can highlight all of this data and put, we can have an X column in Excel, we can have a Y column in Excel, and we can copy and paste this data into Excel. And in Excel, one of our chart options is scatter plot or scatter chart. And we will use that scatter chart to very quickly get a scatter plot. Okay? All 
All right, so here is what our scatter plot will look like, and I'm going to go through the actual Excel picture here in just a minute. All right, and, and once we have our scatter plot, we're going to ask ourselves, do we see any kind of pattern here? Does it look like there's a linear pattern, a nonlinear pattern, or, or no relationship whatsoever? All right, clearly there appears to be a positive linear correlation, meaning that as GDP increases, the carbon dioxide emissions tend to increase. Okay, so again, what am I doing in Excel? All right, I'm entering the X values into column A, the Y values into column B. I'm going to highlight both columns of data and insert a marked scatter chart. And this chart came straight out of Excel. So this is exactly what we would be looking at. And clearly, we do see there is a positive linear relationship. Okay. Let's talk about the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient is a measure of the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two variables. So does a relationship exist? All right. Is it positive or negative? And how strong is it? The symbol R represents the sample correlation coefficient. You will oftentimes hear it referred to as the Pearson correlation coefficient. All right. So those of you that complain to me uh, that you don't like using Excel, uh, let me show you, this is the formula for R, okay? So if I didn't let you use Excel, and I didn't let you use calculators, and I was one of those uh, professors that made you use formulas, this is what you would have to use. This is, this is what we did before technology. But you're gonna have a command in, or a function in Excel where you're just going to be able to get the Pearson correlation coefficient very quickly and then uh, interpret it as, as strong and directional. Okay, now again, R is the sample correlation coefficient. It's coming from sample data. So what is our parameter? The population coefficient, uh, correlation coefficient is represented by the Greek letter rho. All right, so it looks kind of like a little bit of an italicized P but it is the Greek letter rho. Okay, the range of the correlation coefficient is negative one to one. If R equals negative one, there is a perfect negative correlation, meaning for, for each one increase in X, there is a one decrease in, in Y. If R is close to zero, there is no linear correlation. And if R equals 1, there is a perfect positive correlation. Okay, so let's just look at some different R values, some sample correlation coefficients. So here's a scatter plot with a sample correlation coefficient of negative 0.91. Because it's negative, it's, it is, because the R is negative, we have a negative correlation. Okay, now we want to look at the actual decimal value. We've got 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is darn close to 1, right? So that makes it strong. So we have a strong negative correlation with negative 0.91. What about 0.88? Again, it's positive, and it's pretty darn close to 1. So we're going to call that a strong positive correlation. Okay, what about 0.42? Again, 0.42 is positive but it's, it's further away from one, all right? In fact, we're on the lower half of zero to one. So we're between zero and 0.5, so we're gonna call that a weak positive correlation. And then 0 0.07, all right? Now let's look at this. Is this going to be no linear correlation or non-linear correlation, okay? We could say, because of the way I'm calling this nonlinear correlation, but I'm going to be honest, guys. If you said to me, Angie, that looks like they're everywhere, that's no linear correlation, I would not tell you you're wrong. All right. On the exam, when I give you scatter plots uh, or um, correlation coefficients and ask you to interpret them, I can assure you they will be obvious. There will be no room uh, for argument in terms of what you're looking at. Okay, let's go through an example. All right, calculate the correlation coefficient for the gross domestic products and carbon dioxide emissions data. What can you conclude? All right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna copy and paste this data into Excel. 
So we're going to have GDP in one column and our CO2 emission in another column. Then in an empty cell, we're going to type equals Pearson in a parentheses. We're going to highlight the data in column A and type a comma. And then we're going to highlight the data in column B and close the parentheses and hit enter. Okay, so here's a picture out of an Excel where I put the data in A, I put our, our um, uh, emissions data in, in column B, all right, and then you can see where I typed Pearson and I highlighted my data in A and then comma my data in B and pressed enter and got my correlation coefficient of 0.8824609. Okay, let's do the same thing again, all right, with the old faithful data, all right. So here, what I'm doing, let me go back one. All right, so I'm going to take duration, and I'm going to put that in column A, and then I'm going to take all the times and put that in column B, all right. You can choose, now I'm going to show you a different one here. Here, you, you can also type equals cor corel, kind of short for correlation. So you can do C-O-R-R-E-L, and then in your parentheses highlight your X values and then comma your Y values alright you can type either Pearson or Corel um, you can also if you have something called the data analysis pack installed in Excel um, you just have a straight up correlation option um, okay and so here we're getting a, a correlation coefficient of approximately 0.979 again a strong positive correlation Okay, let's talk a little bit about correlation versus causation. The fact that two variables are strongly correlated does not in itself imply a cause and effect relationship between the variables. All right, you guys, we don't get cause and effect in statistics. If there is a significant correlation between two variables, you should consider the following possibilities. Is there a direct cause and effect relationship between the variables? Does X cause Y? Okay. Is there a reverse cause and effect relationship between the variables? Does Y cause X? See, just because two variables are correlated, we don't know how one is affecting the other. Is it possible that the relationship between the variables can be caused by a third variable or by a combination of several other variables? All right, so back um, in the 1980s, there was a famous study came, that came out that said that mothers who breastfed their, their babies had had babies with higher intelligence and so you know so much marketing then was done on if you breastfeed your child your child will be smarter well what they didn't take into effect were all the lurking variables that were in between mothers who happened to breastfeed and how the advantages that some of those children were able to have Okay. Is it possible that the relationship between two variables may be a coincidence? 